Now, here's, here's something that any of you have ever, how many of you have ever taken Coumadin before? So you know better than me, this is not a fun medication to take, right? You gotta think about everything you do when you're taking Coumadin every day. Like when you go to the local pharmacy to buy something for a cough or a cold, you gotta think, is there something in that over-the-counter cough or cold medicine that could interfere or make my risks of bleeding on Coumadin worse? Or if you go to an urgent care center for a productive cough and they say you have bronchitis, here's an antibiotic, your bell needs to go off in your head and remember that you read that book when you started Coumadin that says don't take any prescription medications until you tell your doctor that you're on Coumadin. Because so many medications interact with Coumadin in a way you wouldn't want it to. Some of them make your blood thicker so your clot risk goes up. Some of them make your blood thinner so your bleeding risk goes up. It's an entirely sensitive interaction that you need to be aware of. You don't have to know all the names of the medications that interact. In fact, I have to look them up because there are so many that interact with Coumadin. You just have to know no new medication, either over the counter or by prescription until you check with the person who's giving you your Coumadin. So here, for example, the anticoagulation management service is a phenomenal resource. And if you get told by somebody outside of here that you need a new something, call them and say, is it OK for me to take? Or do I have to adjust my Coumadin dose or get my INR checked a little sooner? It's pretty simple to do. There are so many issues with this medication. I mean, I could spend the whole hour just talking about how many problems there are. You got to watch what you eat. You have to be consistent on your diet. You have to be careful about alcohol. These are all factors that play a, play a role. And no matter how compliant you are, no matter how good you are about taking it at 6 o'clock every evening like they told me to do, there is an unpredictable response to this medicine. You could be perfectly stable on Coumadin for months at a time, and all of a sudden, your test comes back with an INR of 4 and a half. Right? And you say, I didn't do anything different. And someone like me says, come on, level with me. What, what did you, doc, I swear I didn't, it's not that you did anything different. It's a crazy drug, period. It's a crazy drug. So you got to be careful with this. Now, just to show you that it's not you, when you look at medical studies that have compared Coumadin dosing to other treatments, where the goal of treatment was to keep that INR between two and three, in the best of medical studies, where the results are always better than outside of medical studies, they just always are, only 66% of the time is the INR where it's supposed to be. That's in the best of situations. That's kind of unbelievable. But in the real world, it can be as low as less than half the time. So it's not you. It's the drug. It's a crazy drug, period. So what's new? Well, there's this whole new class of things called novel. Novel meaning kind of cool. Oral meaning you take them by mouth. That's a good thing. No needles. As my kids say, anything without a needle is a good thing. And anticoagulants, blood thinners. They call them novel oral anticoagulants, or NOACs. That's kind of the buzz phrase for this. Here's the beauty of this. Check this out. Someone gets diagnosed today with a new blood clot in a vein in a leg. And I decide that I don't need to give them a shot. I don't need to put them in the hospital. I give them a pill. And from the day they take that pill, they're protected. Sounds almost too good to be true, right? No needles, no overlap, no recurrent blood tests in the first few days, no laying in a hospital bed. It's unbelievable. There are several of these. Some of these are available in the United States for the treatment and prevention of blood clots in people with irregular heart rhythms. And I'm not going to talk about that at all today. But there's one medication that's approved by the Food and Drug Administration to use in the United States for the treatment of new blood clots in the veins and the legs and even new blood clots in the veins and the lungs. That's this one, Rivaroxaban, approved in the United States. So here's what we're going to show you. This is 
a medication that's actually available in the United States, but not for vein blood clots, for that heart rhythm issue. And you don't have to be a scientist to be able to tell that if I show you that the red line is Coumadin and the blue line's this new drug, and we're looking at the risk of blood clots, look at that. They're identical. That tells you that this pill is just as effective as Coumadin. But we always say, well, what about the bleeding risk? Well, check this out. This is looking at any bleeding, Coumadin and this new medication. And notice here that there's actually lower bleeding risk with the new medication than Coumadin. So it's just as effective in preventing blood clots with lower bleeding risk. Well, that sounds pretty good, right? But let's get to what's available in the United States. This was a press release that came out by the Food and Drug Administration. That's got to be pretty important. November 2nd, 2012, so almost a year ago, saying that they are now approving this drug, Rivaroxaban, to treat blood clots in the veins and the legs or the lungs. Why did they do this? They did it because of two big-time trials. They were called the Einstein studies, pretty smart people who were involved in this, obviously. Maybe a little arrogant, but. Um, uh, so this is one looking at this pill for the treatment of vein blood clots. And again, I'm just going to show you the standard way to take care of it is the shot of Lovenox, right? And the Coumadin overlap, and then you continue the Coumadin, right? That you guys have done that. This is that treatment. This is the pill alone. No shots, no IVs, just the pill. And we're looking at the event rate of new blood clots forming over the course of a year. There actually were fewer blood clots in the new drug treatment that didn't require a shot, didn't require an IV, didn't require a hospitalization. And this is actually looking at after you completed six months of treatment with either the new pill or Coumadin, and you stopped the medication because you completed six months of treatment, and then they randomized again by chance half of those patients to the medication and half those patients to a sugar pill that had no activity, look at the long-term reduction in risk over the next year of new blood clots, dramatically lower with the new medication. It's why Dr. Ansel said that all things being equal in people who have blood clots, particularly if we don't know why they had them, we like to treat them longer. Because look at this risk of getting another blood clot in the first year after you completed treatment compared to if you're on this medication. But again, you appropriately would say, well, this sounds too good to be true. I bet you there's more bleeding with this new medicine. Not so. This is the combination, right? Shots of Lovenox with warfarin compared to rivaroxaban, no difference in bleeding. So, more effective in preventing blood clots in the early stage, much more effective than preventing new blood clots a year after you complete therapy than no treatment, and similar bleeding risk. 